Suprabhatam, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, thank you very much once again for joining us from across the globe. A great pleasure to welcome all of you for this morning session, which is on a very uh, profound and moving subject of Drupad and healing. Drupad is one of the most ancient or the most ancient classical form of music and uh, we have with us two wonderful practitioners of this music. We have Mr. Sajjan Shankaranji and Srimati Tarakini ji, who will be in conversation and lead us through the uh, deeply healing nature of this music. I'd love to introduce Taraji to you. So Tarakini ji, Srimati Tarakini ji, whom I fondly refer to as Taradi, is a very, very talented personality, very well-known personality in the fields of education and music. She's an independent consultant in education and music and works with several reputed institutions in Bangalore, Andhra Pradesh, Delhi and Ahmedabad, developing curriculum and training teachers and trainers. Taradi is an advisor to the Shankar Mahadevan Music Academy and conducts uh, extremely um, uh, beautiful programs through this particular organization. She has trained intensively in Hindustani classical music from the late Sri Narayan Rao Patwardhan, Srimati Meera Kirvartkar Deshpande, and the late Pandit Rama Rao V. Nayak. She is currently training in Khayar from Srimati Lalit J. Rao and in Dhrupad from Padmashri Gundecha Brothers. Taraji is a founder director of a music collective called Sunad and has presented over 80 shows that demystify classical music. And uh, uh, Taradi is also, um, does a lot of uh, social work and all through music, reaching different sections of society where she tries to, one is awaken people to the uh, power, rhythm and beauty of our ancient traditions through music and introducing creativity and art to different sections of society. So Taradi, a very warm welcome to you. Hardika Swagatam. <laughs> We've had Taradi on our show. Bhavati muted us. We've had uh, Taradi on our show last year also. She had, in, uh, she had interviewed and had a conversation with uh, Padmashri Umakan Gundechaji from the Drupad Sansthan in Bhopal. And we had also had uh, the Sunad group that had performed for us in the last festival. So if you want to know more about Sunar, please look them up on Facebook as well as uh, look up the programs uh, that were conducted last year. I'd like to introduce Taradi to please um, welcome Taradi to introduce Sajjan Ji with, to us today and then take the conversation forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Anuradha and Vinay Ji so much for, uh, for this wonderful opportunity and this platform. I think it's just amazing work that Indica, the Indica Yoga Festival is, is achieving. So let I have the pleasure of introducing my young friend, uh, Sajan. Sajan was introduced to Indic knowledge systems through the Chinmay mission in his childhood. And his journey on the path of yoga has been deepened since 2004 through Shri Shri Ravi Shankar and the Art of Living Foundation. He is also a trained yoga instructor from the S. Vyasa Yoga University. While doing his B.Tech from IIT Bombay, he discovered a deep connection with the Drupad music tradition, which seemed to be a direct application of the principles of yoga. Uh, so so what, what I'm really thrilled about is when a youngster who's doing IIT discovers music and Drupad. I think this is, this is um, 
something we really need to encourage amongst the youth of our country. He felt an urge to learn it in detail and to his good fortune, he was accepted as a full-time disciple of renowned Drupad gurus, the Gundecha brothers. He spent the larger part of eight years as a resident student of their Bhopal Gurukul. He now performs and teaches Drupad actively and works on various other artistic and academic projects. While Sajjan continues his Drupad training through the regular visits to the Gurukul, he started Swarayog to formally bring his two core areas of interest, Drupad and Yoga, onto a common ground, deepen his own engagement with it and also share it with others. So I think that is very much what will be the substance of his discussion today. Drupad as healing. So before we move on to that, he requested that we start with an invocation. So I will sing a shloka from the Ishavasya Upanishad, which is composed by the Padma Shri Gundeja brothers in Rag Hindol. And I hope you will experience the power of Drupad through this invocation. In this shloka, which is from the Isha Vasi Upanishad, the seeker says, O Pushan, O Narisha, O lonely traveler in the heavens, O controller of all, Surya, son of Prajapati, disperse thy rays and gather up thy burning light. I behold thy glorious form, the Purusha within thee. He am I. Just, just these words of Purusha Soham Asmi, which we are singing in Drupad, which gives all the energy of the universe to our little individual self, showing us that we are not little individual selves. We are that enormous force that exists in the universe. Um, how can that be anything less than healing? So now over to you, Sajan, and maybe you could start by explaining today 
the topic of the talk, Dhrupad and healing, in the context of the entire theme of this Indika Yoga Festival, which is healing, wellness and wisdom. So over to you, Sachin. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tara ji. And uh, again, thank you to Anuradha ji, Vinay Chandra ji and everyone at Indic Academy for doing this extraordinary event and for inviting such amazing people from around the world uh, to share their wealth of knowledge with everybody. And such an honor to be one of those people. Uh, so the theme for this uh, whole conference, for this global festival of yoga, healing, wellness and wisdom, it's, it's quite amazing that these three things are put together. We generally don't look at uh, healing and wisdom, uh, wellness and wisdom together. Uh, so I think it's, it's amazing to see these three things brought together. And the path of yoga is, I think it's the most uh, direct way to address these three principles put together. The Yoga Sutras, Maharshi Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, which are, which have been a very important guiding uh, text for me. I think it can be considered the go-to manual for for this for this theme. It gives us, I think, it gives us three things. First is it just makes us aware of principles of of our own internal being, and and then it nudges us very gently to take responsibility ourselves. It's not just about telling us things. It's about gently nudging us to take responsibility, sometimes not so gently also. And, and then it's again not just about theory, but a very practical toolkit that we can actually put into practice, which makes it magical. We get fragments of of the principles that we encounter in a lot of self-development programs and things like that around the world, which are all great. I mean, they all help people. There's no doubt about that. But this complete holistic package of sorts is amazing. And I feel, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I was wondering also how, how would you bring in the Drupad part of it? The yes. yoga, yes, and... Patanjali, Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, which I will request you to expand upon now. But um, how how does Drupad come into this then? Right. Yeah. That's a great, great point. So I feel these principles that we encounter in the Yoga Sutras, they are not restricted to the conceptualization of yoga as we think of it today in general. Like a general person thinks of yoga, sees a yoga mat, first of all. Uh, so I think these principles are not restricted to what we think of as what we think of as yoga. Uh, there is a lot of compartmentalization that of knowledge that has happened over over a period of time, and many knowledge systems that probably began as a common stream have grown independently and maybe somewhere lost touch with each other. So I think that makes Indica Yoga's initiative all the more amazing, bringing people from very diverse uh, streams of and exploring yoga in such different ways onto common ground. So today what I want to kind of the crux or the fundamental premise of what I want to share is looking at sound and music, which is already an integral part of many people's yoga practice. Uh, but usually sound and music is used as an element to enhance the practice of yoga. Uh, but for me, uh, as a practitioner, I feel yoga itself can happen through music abhyasa and not using music as a tool to enhance, which is great. Uh, but yoga itself can be practiced through the practice of music, through the practices that Drupad or any music, but I'm going to talk about Drupad because that's what I learn and that's what I feel uh, is much more conducive in this context. So, yes, so that, I think that is what I'm also waiting to hear from you because I'm in a similar position. You know, uh, I find it so much easier to concentrate, to meditate when I'm singing and especially Drupad, which really focuses the mind. So I'm hoping you will throw light on that. 
So I interrupted you when you started talking about um, uh, the Yoga Sutras. And so may I request you now to go back to that first and tell you how, uh, tell us about how your entire yogic practice is founded in Maharshi Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. Absolutely. So I would like to uh, speak from a practitioner's perspective and not so much from an academic perspective, especially a practitioner's perspective focused as a student of Dhrupad uh, and a student of yoga, of course, but that goes without saying. Yes. Uh, so I feel the Yoga Sutras, first of all, I think it should be made mandatory reading for, for every artist in the country. Uh, at least the first two chapters, at least that much, that should be. So, uh, let's, I'll, I'll just share some, some of the principles that guide me as a Drupad practitioner in yes. the direct application of the sutras. First, let's take the second chapter, the Sadhana Pada. Uh, that is maybe the most uh, practically applicable component of the sutras because he, uh, right, right from the beginning where he starts talking about the mechanisms of Dukkha and how to overcome it. Uh, it is, it is so uh, dukkha as a concept. He lays so much light on it in so many different perspectives, and enables us to enables us to look at various mechanisms to deal with it and to overcome it. So dukkha, if you look at it as just sorrow or misery, an unpleasant state of mind, I think that is probably the root cause of any issue that we face, lack of ability to focus on Riyas or lack of, um, or even if I'm focusing on Riyas, if I'm not, not happy with what's happening, even if I'm spending a lot of time practicing. So right from so the beginning. Riyas as in regular music practice, right? Music, the word sorry, Riyas okay. means regular music practice. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you yeah, for yeah. <laughs> pointing yeah. that out. Yeah. Uh, so right from Kriya Yoga, which he starts off with, he defines Kriya Yoga and then he goes on to the eight limbs of yoga. Every, every sutra is like a practical guide. So the, he talks about avidya as, as the first of the kleshas and, and kind of the root of the other kleshas. Kleshas being the causes of Dukkha as, as he defines it. There are four principles that come up here, which which I find very interesting as a student of music. So the principles help me keep perspective and focus on something when I'm practicing. The four principles, uh, the sutra itself is Anitya Shuchi Dukkha Nathmasu Nitya Shuchi Sukhatma Khyatera Vidya. So four principles that come out, something that is eternal. If you look at Avidya, what is relevant to us is to look at Vidya. So he's pointing out avidya as a cause for unhappiness. So then let's look at vidya. So could you could you just uh, say what is avidya and vidya as you go along? I mean, right, just right. the word meanings for those of people who are not familiar with the words. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the sutra itself defines avidya. Yeah. 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 So avidya is these four principles and being confused about what they actually are. So. Confusing something which is transient, something that changes, something which is temporary to something that is permanent, something that is eternal. That is the first thing. The second principle is, con is mistaking something that is impure, something that is blemished, something that is adulterated by, by our coarse human experiences into something that is pure, something that is clear of, of any such adulterations. Uh, and confusing sorrow for joy, the third one, Dukkha and Sukha. And the fourth one is confusing something which is not the true nature of the self with the true nature of the self, Atma. So four principles that come up is something that is eternal, the principle of purity, the principle of joy, and the principle of the self, of the true nature. Mm -hmm. So these four principles come up. and. Through the practice of music, through the practice of something like Drupad, I think it's a great mechanism to engage with these four principles. Because when 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 I practice, when I sit to practice, the I'm looking at pure properties of sound, 
that are free from any contexts and that do not change with time. If I'm practicing Rag Bhairav or if I'm practicing Rag Gopali, the harmonic relations that, that I need to uh, engage with or that I strive for, it doesn't matter if I do it today, it doesn't matter if I do it 100 years later, it doesn't matter if I do it 5000 years later, it is eternal. Those, those relationships of those sounds, the intervals, the notes being arranged in that sequence, that is real. It is, it is going to be eternal. And hence we have ragas that have lasted over centuries, maybe millennia. And the music itself is age old, age old. So, so this focusing on that, on, on the eternal nature of, of what we are doing. And then purity. Purity is again a very interesting, maybe somewhat misleading concept also. It's not about something being pure and something being impure. It's not about this versus that. But just the idea of of freeing the element from, from the conceptualizations that our small mind puts on it. Mm -hmm. I remember so many times in class I would be singing and Guruji would tell me, you're thinking too much, you're confusing yourself and hence you're going off. Bade Guruji, we, we refer to our Gurus as Bade Guruji and Chote Guruji because they are two brothers. So, Bade Guruji very often says, don't, don't think too much. I would ask him, should my sur be higher, should it be lower? He would say, focus on the consonants. But interestingly, again, the same Gurus, when they need to correct me, will tell me, take it higher, take it lower. So, it, it seems contradictory, but, but this core principle of of freeing the conceptualizations that our mind puts in mm. at a very subtle level because we are working with sound which is a very subtle element. Uh, we are able to understand this phenomenon in great depth, this phenomenon of uh, purity. And the third principle, joy, that goes without saying, music brings so much joy. And I think that is a very unique feature that the practice of music does because it, it requires a lot of discipline. It requires immense, immense amount of discipline. But it gives so much joy just singing the, the power that the notes have. Uh, it's amazing. And, and the self, the understanding the true nature of the self. This, I think there are many levels to this. So at the first stage, we have we have what we call the ragas. We have these, it's very hard to describe what a raga is. Um, we, to begin with, we understand it as a melodic construct, a set of notes uh, that, that have some rules within them, that has some framework. So you have these five notes or these six notes that come together and you have a raga. But a raga is not a fixed melody. It, so again, to begin with, we say it's a melodic framework within which we sing. But as we go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into it, we realize there are so many subtle nuances. Various notes are to be uh, used in very particular ways. There are particular approaches to different notes. And as we go deeper, we discover more and more, more and more. And we realize that the Raga is almost a living entity of itself that exists out of us. And when we practice the Raga, we are trying to communicate with the Raga. So the most satisfying sessions of singing for me are, are when, when I'm able to listen to what the Raga is telling me and sing those phrases out. That, so I think to begin with, we go into the state of, of identifying with the true nature of the Raga. And Chote Guruji would many times say, once you really get into the Raga, the notes disappear. So if you're singing Bhairav, which has seven notes, all the seven notes, Sare, Gama, Pada, Ni. After a point, you're singing Bhairav. You're not singing Gama, Resa. You're not singing Gama, Dhapa. You're singing Bhairav. The notes disappear. You begin to dissolve, uh, dissolve the entry point identities because you enter through the notes, but you begin to dissolve that. And as you go deeper and deeper and deeper, Ultimately, you reach a stage where even the Raga disappears and you go into a space of complete stillness and silence. Chote Guruji again would very often say that after a point, it does not matter what Raga I am singing. Every Raga takes 
takes the person to silence to the to a space of silence so i think this the concept of abhyasa abhyasa again i'll talk about a little later but uh, the first sutra where maharshi patanjali describes abhyasa tatra sthitau yatno bhyasa abhyasa is the effort that one takes to remain in the state of yoga and this is fantastic because through the practice of music we are doing exactly this we are exactly very directly practicing these principles the principles of of yoga which we'll go into in more detail Yeah. So I'm just going to I'm just going to ask you a couple of things and clarify a couple of things. One is that you have now established through this sutra that you have just explained the one that is actually defining vidya and avidya, right? Vidya being knowledge, if I may say, for the lay person, and avidya being kind of ignorance, right? So, but avidya is defined so beautifully in these four principles that you have. outlined which actually tells you about what vidya is that it is pure it it is uh, unblemished it is of the nature of the true self you know so all all this has defined vidya and avidya is the dukha or sorrow which happens when you are not in vidya have i understood this correctly right absolutely okay absolutely. so then the second point that you made is that there is joy right one of the four principles there is joy and you said it requires a lot of discipline and you took the example of music of drupad particularly or music in in general which requires a, or any anything for that matter we are taking drupad but it could be dance it could be science it could be research it could be anything without discipline we don't get to that level of joy am i right yeah about yeah. that okay absolutely so i i mean i'm just kind of highlighting the general applicability of this concept right and uh, so when you're talking of discipline all right and we are looking at discipline per se and and i know that so many practitioners whether it is drupad or it is you know shankar mahadevan ji who have come in contact with uh, who you know i mean the discipline is tremendous if he's got to sing one of his uh numbers on stage right i mean the kind of discipline that goes into it is 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 huge is it's intense he's truly gifted as an artist but in spite of that the kind of uh consistent discipline that is necessary is is uh not any different from what we as drupad practitioners try to do right so uh what what i want to ask you is the question and and that's what's coming into my mind people might think that any kind of discipline is is hard is is in a way painful right then how does it lead to joy so would you like to say something about that right uh just an anecdote that comes to mind from the gurukul uh chote guru ji na he was in a very uh, humorous mood so he was cracking a joke but he was also making a very important point uh people were gushing about how drupad is such a peaceful music and it's so so much joy and so much bliss and things like that and, and there was this twinkle in his eye so many times you you guess that he's going to say something something very almost crazy at this point yeah and then he looked and said who said drupad is a music of peace he said drupad is a music of pain <laughs> It, and and then and people were a bit they knew he was joking but but they looked at because we knew that an explanation was going to follow and and he said because if you are not in pain the listener will be in pain <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so uh, i think and can what, you can you say what he meant by that <laughs> yeah i mean there he was making a point that a lot of people use joy as an excuse for mediocrity so a lot of people say hum khush hone ke liye gaate hain we are singing to be happy and they use that as an excuse for low quality music mm -hmm. so so that was the main point he was trying to make but as with everything that he used to say there would always be multiple levels uh, what what i also understood is that 
the listener the first listener to what i am singing is me myself and if if i am not in the pain of discipline then i am going to be in the pain of the listener yeah so if if that quality is not there when when i am singing for myself then then i i may be satiating my ego by by saying ki it, i have practiced so much i can sing at 135 beats per minute i can sing at this speed i can do this kind of a twisted melodic pattern i might be doing all that but if my discipline and my focus is not there to the utmost level the yes. quality of that output is not going to be as refined as polished and as capable of touching the consciousness so so as a listener who is listening to myself singing uh, the the joy of it will also probably be superficial if my involvement is not completely in that yeah beautiful yeah i i completely completely engage with that and what you just talked the example you gave of the notes disappearing and only the raga remaining you know the pain is actually the discipline and the pain is while entering the raga you know you you are conscious of the notes you are conscious of where uh, you know what the samvad or the conversation between the notes has to be to establish a rag called bhairav you are very conscious of that Thank but you. once you really enter there that is when you can forget about all that and Thank only you. the rag remains and that's when the joy starts appearing right yeah, absolutely Thank you very much. yeah yeah that that, that guruji that once uh, yeah. in in a group class he was saying that to to really become a great singer you need to practice each element every palta which are melodic exercises mm-hmm. or every pattern every rhythmic pattern thousands and thousands and thousands of times and then you need to forget it and yes. he said it's very important to also forget it so if you don't do that thousands and thousands and thousands of times then then that refinement is not going to be there but if you don't forget it then the spontaneity and the the trueness to the moment also will not be there we find a lot of music of very technically high quality which does not touch us yes so that also happens yeah yes 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 because that entry point was not right you know uh-huh. you Yeah, yeah, I know. I've had that discussion too. That's wonderful. So, can we move on to uh, you know when you talk about uh, Drupad, you know, um, as one of the foundations of music itself, right? The foundation of sound is is the primordial sound, Omkar, hmm. Om, Om, right? So, can you talk a little bit about that? about what is the relevance of om both in drupad uh practice as well as in yogic practice absolutely i think that's one of the most important points in in what we're doing uh before that just a couple of other uh sutras that please please uh, yes that, go that, ahead just talk because om is such an important thing so i want yes. to kind of keep that uh yes yeah yes. as the focus a little just a right. couple of minutes later sure uh, sure all the sutras are of course very very relevant uh, and we can go but we we don't have enough time to really go into all of that uh, but even if you look at the eight limbs which is probably the most popular or well known uh, yes. part of the yoga sutras uh, each of those are also so directly applicable like uh, yamas and niyamas we had an amazing session just couple of days back in in this yoga festival uh, every principle of that i think a student of music needs to practice for the very same reason that a student of yoga needs to practice uh, if you look at asana of course asana is it cultivates the body to be an instrument of yoga but i also look at asana as a parallel to akar the practice of akar that we sing and it it feels like an ability that we need to develop but also a necessity and akar the principles of asana sthira sukham asanam i think it directly applies to akar also we need the stability uh and it needs to be pleasant so the uh, we need to have clarity in it it needs to be pleasant sounding and so, when it comes to that pronunciation yeah so you can explain what akar is just explain that yeah. yes yes yeah, yeah. Uh, 
So uh, this is just a random theory of my own. <laughs> it may not be academically valid, but I think A is common in asana and akar. <laughs> so <laughs> I just like to relate it that way. Uh, akar as a practice in music is using the sound of A, the syllable A, and using that to sing. Using that as the as the instrument that carries the sound. So to carry the sound, we need to generate some. vocalization so a is the syllable anyway when we talk about om we'll talk more about the three components of omkar yes uh, so could you also just demonstrate akar put on your tanpura and just show us akar yeah you can do yeah, that yeah that would be lovely so the tanpura again is another thing that we will talk about just immediately after this is it audible yes perfectly okay. so we have this canvas of sound that's getting generated and we sing over this i see the tanpura as a canvas over which a painter paints and the tanpura is yeah it's kind of the reference yes so the akar i'll just sing it so so keep that keep that slightly softly there in the background yeah so okay. uh, i i i also uh, recall that you know because for people who are listening and who are probably not quite familiar with what drupad itself is drupad is like the you know it's it's one of the one of the genres of music which is the most ancient form that is now being practiced um it is at least 2000 years old and it seems to have come directly from the chanting of the vedas the samagana the samaveda and is is um uh forms the foundation we believe of all the music in this country um uh, and uh, the the one beautiful thing about drupad and just now sajan demonstrated the akar is is how we are talking about natural sound right the natural the sound which is natural to um each individual which which kind of is your signature your signature of what you really are you know i've heard anu, anu, uh, anuradha talk about this several times and it always reminds me of this thing in so when he just sang the akar so he just sang um emphasis in drupad is to bring out this natural sound and uh, sajan will now tell you how much as a student of drupad in the gurukul the emphasis on just this absolutely pure akar which is producing the natural sound uh, i myself i had to go through uh, one month of rigorous just riyaz of this akar to correct what was not the natural sound that i had been singing for five decades of my life so i was 50 years old and ramakant ji made me change the voice with which i was singing because he said i was covering it up with makeup you know he said it's not your natural voice get your natural voice so drupad is one one uh, kind of music that is actually giving you the space to find your natural voice am i right 
Sorry, I've gone a little bit off the track, but I felt we needed to say what Drupad is really. Okay, so can you just tell us a little bit of your experience of this Kharaj Riyaz that every student does in Drupad and how it leads to the discovery of your natural voice? Absolutely. I think you actually, you did not go off topic, rather you took it so much in a more focused direction. Uh, very directly related to what you, what you have brought up. I want to share a, a quotation from Abhinav Gupta's uh, commentary on the Natya Shastra. This is a translation by Dr. Mukund Lat, where he describes the property of swara, of a, of a musical note, if you have to loosely translate swara. And I'll just read out the translation that Dr. Mukund Lat has done. He says, uh, on listening to a rightly sounded swara, the psyche of a listener is forcibly shaken away from his normal everyday consciousness and ascends to a new aesthetically moving state of being. So this potential of swara, of, of just one note, uh, how can you do that? I think that is the crux of, of what you just said and this relates to the Kharaj sadhana that we do. Uh, so the most relevant principles of the Kharaj Sadhana, especially for people who are not necessarily musicians, I would say, uh, ties into the previous point that you brought up, the Omkar. And so now I think we should talk about the Omkar and the yes. Tanpura. Yes. So, so the Omkar, uh, most people here know that the Omkar comes with three syllables, A, U and Ma. Uh, there are so many conceptualizations, so many theories, so many models to understand the Omkara. There are books written on, on various aspects of just Omkara. There are Upanishads dedicated to Omkara. It's such a vast, vast subject. As a music practitioner, uh, I think what we do is we go into the physiological manifestation of Omkara in the body. And many yoga practitioners do this. They chant A, U and Ma in the practice of yoga. And even I like to do this. After doing asanas, when we lie down to relax, uh, we chant A, the Akara, the A syllable. And we observe the vibrations inside the body travel to the lower part uh, from the abdomen, solar plexus and below. It, it spreads below. The U, the U syllable, the U Kara, stays in the middle part, the middle part of the body, centers in the Anahata region, the heart region, and stays resonates in the middle part of the body, the ma, ma kara, the ma sound. It resonates in the upper part of the body. So, Om, to me, the most relevant way as a musician, as a student of music, as I said, there are so many uh, interpretations and concepts that Omkara has, but the most relevant as a musician is Omkar is bringing the entire body in harmony. So, a sound that is produced based on the principle of Omkara is a sound that the mind is focusing on the entire body as the instrument of sound and utilizing it in, in union, kind of. So, we unite the lower, the middle and the upper region and then we get the right kind of sound. Now, if you look at the physics of it, we can we can look at harmonics, we can look at overtones, we can look at the... It's not necessary to do that, but we unconsciously anyway do that as practitioners because of the Tanpura. So, the Tanpura, what exactly is the Tanpura? I think it's one of the most brilliant pieces of engineering in human history. So, the Tanpura is basically just a physical manifestation of omkara itself in a way it's like the it's it mirrors the potential of sound in the human body so in the tanpura you can hear the sound faintly in the background and i also have an actual tanpura which i used to practice with there uh, the tanpura has four strings the first string we have the p or the fifth note below the sa below the reference note so it's kind of a lower note, it's halfway below the sa. Then the next two strings are the middle sa, the, the or reference. 
and then the last string is the sa which is below one octave below it's a very low bass note so you have the low you have the mid and you have this this brilliant piece of engineering called the jawari i don't know how people conceptualize that came up with that it's extraordinary so the bridge that you have at the base of the tanpura and we have a string that we place in that what that does is it amplifies the upper harmonics it creates this kind of a buzzing sound so when you listen to the tanpura unless you listen carefully you don't realize that it's four strings being plucked it sounds like a continuous soundscape of some kind and this has the upper harmonics and the tanpura we always use a tanpura that is tuned to the pitch that is natural to us so i sing with the tanpura at a particular pitch you would sing at with the tanpura at a different pitch so when i have the tanpura in front of me to to really practice the principle of consonance to to merge my voice into the sound of the tanpura it is very crucial that i produce a kind of sound that balances the regions of my body and hence generates the right kind of harmonics that dissolve into the tanpura so sajan now in view of the time that is lapsing very very fast <laughs> i i i think we should leave our listeners with an experience of this a u and ma that you said okay so if you just start it off i will join you and i will we will request our uh, listeners also to experience what you talked of as the sound reverberating through the lower part of the body the middle and the and the top the a the u the ma so can we just do that as as i know there's much more that you would like to share with us but i think we have to we'll also extend the session by another 15 minutes this is so fascinating oh okay great thank you then we will continue but okay then shall we leave this demonstration for the end or shall we do it now please do the demonstration okay all right so sajan maybe you can just do the demonstration now of the a u yeah. ma and we will do sure. it together i mean we start it off tell sure. us exactly how to do it and then we'll proceed with the next point yeah sure so let's do it with our eyes closed let's everyone keep our eyes closed and just listen to the sound of the tanpura it's okay if you're not a musician if you are a musician you have trained you have not trained you can raise the volume a bit such as can't you yes yes is this okay little more yes okay just keep your let the tanpura occupy the mind let the vibrations of the tanpura occupy the mind let it happen naturally there's no need to put any too much effort to concentrate or anything just be with the sound of the tanpura feel it resonating within the mind and the body take a few deep breaths in and out chant the a sound just say a a a observe the shape of the syllable a a and now we're going to sustain it for a little longer and see if you can in parallel keep your attention on the tanpura and see if you can take your sound and match into the sound of the tanpura just experience whatever comes up Let's do it together. Take a deep breath in. Ah. Observe the residue vibrations. in the body and the mind just feel where you can feel the vibrations we'll now chant the oo sound just the syllable oo 
just say u and observe the shape of the syllable u u and now we'll hold that for a little longer we'll hold that vowel for a little longer take a deep breath in u let the vibrations of the sound remain in the body and the mind just keep a gentle awareness on whatever is happening we'll now chant the ma sound it will be more like a humming sound mm mm this is the sound that we produce the mouth will be closed take a deep breath in Let the sound remain in the body and the mind. so uh i hope you could feel the in the physiology of each of the syllable it's it's a subtle difference but for people who practice pranayama regularly it's quite perceivable it's quite easily perceivable uh you can you can feel the resonance in different regions of the body and Yeah, sorry, you were saying uh, something. Yeah, no, and I also want to say that um, you know the calmness of the mind after just doing this for a minute that we've just done. I mean, I I can feel it. You know, the settlement of all the excitement that is buzzing through the mind at all times. You know, there, there's there's such a calming effect, and maybe that is what causes the healing. The very practice, the healing. and then a general after going through this for some time the general feeling of wellness yeah yeah this uh, in the yoga sutras uh, first chapter maharshi patanjali talks of nine obstacles yes that a practitioner of yoga faces uh, i'll not go into that in more detail but i think each of that is so relevant to a music practitioner also and he also gives accompanying symptoms which is genius i don't know how so many years back somebody could document all that in such detail anyway sajan, as a solution sorry sajan ji if i may interrupt could you just take us through them i think it's uh, very valuable to uh, you know have this expressed and also heard the nine obstacles you mean yes please yes and how you uh, connect that with the music uh, riyas absolutely absolutely okay so if you look at the nine obstacles we have uh, vyadi sthana samshaya pramada alasya avirati bhranti darshan alabdha bhumi katva anavasti tatva so uh, these are actually very simple and very relatable terms the sanskrit terms may sound a little oh but but they're very simple very straightforward and if you think about it 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 makes us aware of of what we encounter on a regular basis so first is physical inability of some kind some disease and it's very interesting to note that a lot of this manifests when we sit for the practice of yoga back pain shoulder pain leg pain all that comes when I, when i have to sit to meditate or when i have to sit to practice i can sit for 3 hours and watch a movie with no back pain so so it's important to also look at this dimension of yes. of the obstacles so there is that inability of the body 
uh, inability in the mind, a kind of a mental lethargy, the second obstacle. And this is uh, so crucial. Could I request you to tell the name? <coughs> Sorry, tell the name yes, and yes. then the translation. That way, you know, we have a proper connection. Thank you. Right, right. Yes, yes. Stiana, a mental lethargy. Many times when I'm teaching somebody Drupad or when I learned Drupad, when, when I continue to learn Drupad, when I take a class from my guru, uh, there is so much of a push to to look at the sur, sur ko dekho, muster up the energy, don't relax, be, there is mental stamina required to, to be able to sing and the inability to muster up that mental stamina, that mental lethargy to, to think the way we need to, second obstacle. And then doubts, doubt again, really Which just is some sound. share. Some share. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Thanks for reminding me. Yes. Some share. Doubt. Which it, it reduces, it drops down the energy. Usually we doubt, we doubt ourselves. Can I do this? Maybe, maybe I'm not made to do Drupad. Oh, I should have just stuck to engineering. <laughs> this kind of doubts. Uh, doubting the teacher. They are great singers, but, but can they really teach me? <laughs> so this kind of a doubt and doubting the process also. So, okay, Guruji is very amazing and all but what he's teaching me is that really the way to do it is that what he did so so this kind of a doubt we we have these doubts that that we encounter and that acts as a hindrance that acts as a hindrance so lack of doubt does not mean being naive and does not mean blindly following something that anybody says it's not about being naive and things like that in fact there is a lot of space for questioning questioning every process uh, but we need to be aware that that the space of doubt in the mind can act as a hindrance so we have to work to overcome the doubt. So then what do we have? Pramada. Pramada is uh, loosely translated. I think carelessness is what people translate it to. The way I see it is Pramada, you know you need to do something and still you don't do it. So, so I know I need to, if I want to be a Drupad singer, I know I need to practice and I know what I need to do. I know I need to get up in the morning. In general, I know I need to exercise. I need to do this. I need to do that, but still not doing it. Uh, sorry, that, that is alasya. Pramada is knowing that I should not do something and doing that. <laughs> so Pramada and alasya, yeah, that uh, I mixed up the two. So Pramada, very simple. I think this is something that people face very regularly. I, if, if I have office tomorrow or I have something to do tomorrow morning, I need to get up early. I go to bed early enough, but in the bed, I'm scrolling the phone. I know I should not do that, but I'm still doing it. People, some people are diabetic, they have cholesterol or something. They know they shouldn't eat something, still do it. Yeah. And so this doing something that you know you should not do. Alasya is not doing something that you know you should do, which I uh, already. Yeah. Yeah. Alasya, laziness. Uh, I know I should do this, but not doing it. Avirati, Avirati is being stuck in the senses, being obsessed with objects of the sense organs. So it could be anything. It could be the physical touch. It could be uh, just looking at something, looking at some scenery or just seeing movies or something, listening to something. Again, in an obsessive way, it's a problem. If, it, if you get obsessed with the senses, Food, again, taste is something that we get obsessed with. And these are all distractions. In fact, as a musician, the vyadi that we encounter usually comes by wrong diet. So we eat something that we shouldn't eat and then that causes acidity. The throat doesn't function very well and this and that and this and that. So, so everything as a musician that we encounter can be found in these obstacles. If I don't sleep on time, then again, my body is not going to function. I will not be able to sing. And then I say, oh, my body is not supporting me. So, but these are all just excuses because I have not made myself aware of all of this and not taken the steps to ensure that my body and my mind continues to support me. Then we have Branti Darshan. Uh, again, I think it's a master stroke by Maharshi Patanjali to name Branti Darshan in the obstacles uh, because a lot of people get stuck in, in visions that they get, uh, heightened intuition all of which does happen there is no doubt about it all of which does happen but but we see a lot of people using that to mislead themselves in very strange paths and so branti darshan is illusions or hallucinations and it is very common in the world of music as well 
सो जस्ट बींग अवेयर दैट भ्रांति दर्शन इज एन ऑब्स्टिकल इट कैन कीप मी ग्राउंडेड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एंड वेन आई एम सिंगिंग अ रागा आई इट जस्ट कीप्स मी इन चेक बिकॉज आई मे इमेजिन दैट आई एम सिंगिंग वेरी वेल आई मे इमेजिन दैट आई एम बींग ट्रू टू द रागा बट इन रियालिटी मे बी इट्स नॉट सो वी फाइंड मेनी पीपल ऑब्लिवियस टू to the besura pan or the out of tuneness and they just go singing happily having no idea <laughs> that what they singing is completely off so we we see that a lot and in every field it's not just about music yes so alabdh bhumi katva anavasti tatva so both of these i like to look at them together uh, attainment of a particular very deep state of being and unattainment is an obstacle so if you keep practicing for a long time and we don't attain any state at all as a musician if i keep practicing keep practicing keep practicing but never understand what a raga is and never get a glimpse of what that space really is what it means to be in communication with a raga that is a problem and and if it is something that once it happens we know so once i'm able to communicate with the raga i know so if i don't know whether i've achieved it or not it means i've never achieved it so as simple as that and the inability to maintain that state so we get glimpses even as meditation practitioners or as yoga practitioners when we meditate we get glimpses of samadhi even one second in a 20 minute session is such a it's so rewarding Uh, but the inability to maintain that lack of consistency that is also an obstacle and that that causes a hindrance that causes disturbance in the mind so and and i think also it's very important to know that have you really got that glimpse or was that bhranti darshan right you know to yeah. be able to differentiate between those two was that yeah. a hallucination or was that a real thing you know so yeah, yeah. so the nine are very intertwined the nine uh, absolutely obstacles are very intertwined yes yeah yeah and and the accompanying symptoms for this dukha daur manasya angame jayatva shwasa prashwasa so being in an unpleasant state of mind being unhappy miserable dukha daur manasya is bitterness bitterness in the mind that is daur manasya angame jayatva lack of coordination between the mind and the body the body does not obey the mind exactly i mean i we we encounter that also shwasa prashwasa in irregular breathing and breath is one of the most crucial components for a musician so so if i observe these symptoms uh this unpleasant state of mind bitterness all of this if i observe these symptoms it's very important to look at which of the obstacles are kind of causing a hindrance to me and work on that and the solution that maharishi patanjali gives over the next few sutras after this he actually gives solutions mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh one thing i want to highlight because we are anyway quite over the time already ek tatva abhyasa focusing on one principle just one principle and going deep into that ek tatva abhyasa and as a drupad student for me that principle is a principle of samvada consonance guruji in class once uh, many times the classes would go so intense but in the content of the class probably we would have some two notes for 45 minutes so this happens it, ha- it has happened frequently actually yes and we go deep into the note just holding the ray for for 40 minutes just going deep into it and once i asked guruji guruji why is it so difficult to to be in the state of consonance and after singing a note when he sings a phrase it's so difficult to follow that and so he said kind of what abhinav gupta the quotation that i shared some moments ago he said because sur sur has the power to quieten the mind to to kind of kill the mind so when you do that when you are in that space of consonance you are there but after that what you want to conceptualize after becomes all the more challenging because your mind is now dead so either you are so deeply established in it that that it doesn't matter you can just very freely move into what you need to sing next but until you are there it's challenging it's very difficult to to actually remain in tune to actually remain in the space of consonance so 
and consonants okay. again relates to the tanpura to the omkar that we spoke about because that is how we measure consonants so actually summing up this whole thing what we are saying is what drupad abhyasa or the practice of drupad is akin to yoga abhyasa or the practice of yoga because it brings us into consonance with our true selves yes can yes, we say that absolutely so thank you so much sajan that was wonderful uh you are such a accomplished practitioner of yoga and such a uh, sincere seeker of drupad and uh, all that it teaches us that i think your your personal experience has revealed a lot to all of us today so thank you very much and anuradha maybe we can open up for questions now i think that was an absolutely um, mesmerizing session and we don't even know how an hour went by uh, and i think we could have kept listening to you to both of you uh, for this session we could only tap into sajjan's genius uh, and maybe another another time taraji again your own journey has been so deep into this realm of music so yeah be wonderful um we could take some questions and i just was remembering uh, late padmakant i mean padmashri ramakant gundecha ji for this and I, i was thinking that wherever he is he must be so happy uh, that uh, this conversation has taken place because i think it has highlighted the the spirit of the drupad music and brought in the dimension of the yoga shastra amazingly so Oh, thank you, Mr. Sajjan, for this fantastic sharing. Oh, thank you, Mr. Yes. Um, we have here a question by Sri Ram Sarvottam Ji, who is saying greatly enjoyed the discussion. I would love to hear your thoughts on the common terms we find between yoga and class Indian classical music, such as raga, which has vastly different connotations in the two systems, uh, klesas versus melodic entity, and other terms, vinyasa, as in raga vinyasa and vinyasa yoga. thank you for your explanation on those so uh yeah that's a lot of the terminologies have multiple uh interpretations in in the indic knowledge system uh yeah actually i i would not like to get too deep into that and it's not even my area of expertise i think it's more in the space of a language scholar who can really explain the nuances of of why the same terminologies are used uh the only thing that i do is focus on my understanding of those terminologies in the context uh, that is present there so as a student of drupad how does it apply there and of course being aware of the same terminology in other contexts will be very useful because it will add some dimensions to what what we are doing in whatever context we are engaging with that terminology but this i would like to apologize because it's not my area of expertise it's not it's i think it's a very language specific uh thing yeah tara ji would you i don't Taraji, know if you shed some light on that um uh, well the word meaning of raga the in the question is it is it about what is the word meaning of raga he says that uh your thoughts on the com- common terms we find between yoga and indian classical music music so such as raga can have vice- vastly different connotations in the two systems yeah yeah okay okay what i think what what is also coming on is for example yeah terminology raga. for example the klesha yeah. the one of the classes is raga and you have the yes. raga music so how do you combine correct, it correct correct okay okay so let's just take that one term as an example so raga i know means uh, raga dvesha right raga is um the uh, attraction or the pull and and in uh, i the one of the um, theories is that the word raga in the musical context has come from the word ranga you know color uh so that is one of the theories i don't know how 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 valid it is i've read about it so so it is about the <clears throat> color of of a particular 
bhava you know so so when you uh, bhava or emotion or it, it just lose translation of bhava as emotion is also very uh, very superficial as anuradha will agree every word has so many different aspects to it uh, but when we are talking about raga here uh, we are talking about an entire um, you know there's a big there's a lot of theory that connects raga with rasa right so rasa is the essential juice or the essential essence of something you know the essence of something is a rasa and it is connected very deeply to uh, every raga you know so every raga creates a particular rasa that is that is the um, connotation here so um this whole thing this melodic framework which contributes to the creation of a rasa is raga this is how we would define it in the musical context so i know it's different in the as as sajan said in the linguistic context yes <laughs> and this is where i say that the common the common uh, ground between both of them is sanskrit so <laughs> yes absolutely <laughs> absolutely music and the mother of the yoga sutra in a sense because that's the supporting foundation and as ratara ji mentioned that uh, you have uh, it, both of these words come from the root ranj to color ah right and we see that when we are attached to something the mind is completely colored by that by which we are attracted yes so, and that yes. color act like a filter invariably so instead of allowing us to see something in its in its transparent truth yes we can see through that colored lens yes you know which 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 absolutely right which also reminds me of something that as we've been talking so much about ramakant ji chote guru ji you know what he used to say is rag is sagun rag is sagun that is it has qualities and raga you know when you're entering a raga exactly the process that uh, sajan just described when you're entering the raga you are entering a form right sagun is with form with qualities you are entering a sagun space but when you entered and even the raga disappears and leaves you only with the absolute essence of your true self that is the nirgun or without qualities so you have to go beyond the raga really to enter the space that yoga is also trying to take you to Actually, when the range is thing. gone completely. The range is gone completely. The coloring is gone completely. Yes. Yeah. Very specific to raga. Since we are discussing raga, uh, I think what I really like is in the Yoga Sutras, he says "sukhanu shayi raga." We translate it to cravings in the context of yoga. Uh, and if you look at it a little more deeply, it's confusing pleasure. Uh, a confusing joy the causes of joy as something external mm. rather than something internal so i think keeping that in mind is very useful for a musician so so that will help us go beyond the superficial entry points of the raga and connect with it at a deeper level and as you so wisely said then go beyond the raga also yeah yes um could you please demonstrate this to us in some way i mean we'd love to hear some dhrupa then uh feel the coloring of our being you know with a particular note and just allow i know it needs a lot more time for us to go to that nirguna state through a raga yeah. but if you could just give a taste of that experience sure sure so uh, 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 sajan since you've been talking of bhairav why don't we switch on the tanpura you start one alap and i will follow with one alap we'll just give a demonstration okay Is the Tanpura audible? Yes, yes. Which which pitch are you on? This is C. Uh, okay. But we don't need to go too high. So. Yeah, no, it's okay. You just start. I'll manage. Oh.
So we go move, what we just sang was alap, we then move into jod which has an inherent lay or beat. Go on.
Bhakti Taranana Narana Example of Jhalana, which is the fast beat, okay? Rana, 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 Start it, sir. Rana, 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 Tana So what we've just demonstrated, Sajjan and I, uh, is about one minute of what is normally a one hour long exposition of a rag, you know. So <laughs> we've just given you a very, very quick darshan of Drupad and um, I hope the healing and the yogic connection is, could at least be glimpsed. That has been our effort. <laughs> Adbhutam, I think it has left us all wanting to know much more and listen to a lot more Drupad. Because I remember when I was listening to uh, Ramakanji once uh, and he was doing, you know, that Aroha Navaroha in that fast manner. The whole being as it goes through, you know, it's like music enters into those spaces that thought doesn't go, you know, the voice, but that music takes you into those subtle vicissitudes of your being. I mean, it was a fabulous eye-opener for me personally because you work with sound through language, through Sanskrit, and to find these uh, common areas of what sounds can do and the simplifying of sounds. That's what I realized, that we are so, such noisy beings that when you just do these simple long uh, vowels and simple uh, consonants, it seems to tap into our fundamental essential vibratory nature. So yes. there were just two questions, if I can put them forth, because I think it will help our audience appreciate what they have just witnessed. So there's one by Dr. Jay Gupta, I'll combine two there. One by Dr. Jay Gupta, which is that, do you have any thoughts now how the three swaras, Udata, Anudata and Swarita and Vedic chanting got converted in seven notes and when that change happened also, what is the importance of using the Nabhi Tala Prakarana or the abdominal diaphragmatic breathing and voice training and singing? Thanks. And then Nalini Ji uh, Jagbandhan, she's saying, 
that it's a lovely conversation, music and yoga. What do you say about pranayama and classical singing? So. Yeah, okay. So would you like to take it, Sajan, the first question? Uh, Actually, the second question, pranayama is something that I wanted to talk about. Okay, okay, anyway. so do that first. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there is a, I think, drupad or singing is a very direct application of pranayama because uh, if you look at nada, the the element of music, in the Sangeet Ratnakara, it is defined as something that comes from the combination of prana and agni. So prana is not really breath, but, but let's say uh, at a practical level, it, implementation of it, we do it through the breath most commonly. So the breath and the energy, the energy of agni coming together to produce nada, and that with the application of the mind with the principles of consonants that we do is how we create music and the most important principle in in singing is to take deep breaths in fill in the lungs and exhale slowly a very controlled very systematic exhalation and exhalation is always longer than the inhalation in fact while singing we don't even have time to take very slow deep inhalations uh, but even in general, the exhalation is always so much more focused, so much more enhanced. And it's one of the important principles in pranayama as well, uh, where we extend the exhalation. Uh, that is one thing, rhythmic breathing, gati vichedaha, which is one of the principles that Maharshi Patanjali talks of. Uh, rhythmic breathing, we break it into different sections of time. In Drupad, just by doing alap, jod and jhala at different tempos, uh, we are already doing that rhythmic breathing and we're seeing compositions we have a rhythm cycle to keep track of so we breathe in accordance with that in accordance with the words as they exist and another thing the outcomes of pranayama that maharshi patanjali says tataha kshiyate prakasha varanam and dharana sucha yogyata manasaha so the first thing he says pranayama removes the covering over this light within and that while singing, we are able to do that, we are able to reveal the brightness of the raga and of the voice when our breathing is proper. Only when we have attention on the breathing. If you do not pay attention to the breath, that cannot happen. And dharana sucha yogyata manasaha, it makes the mind qualified for dharana. So keeping the attention on the breath allows even the musician to go deeper into a state of focus. That is very essential to sing. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. You'll have to repeat the first question, Anuradha. I've lost it. it was, uh, sorry, it was just about the uh, the three swaras of Udatta, Anudatta, and Swarita. Okay. How they turn into the seven notes and when? Okay, so uh, you know, uh, Udatta, Anudatta, Swarita is the is the principle on which Ramakanji used to keep stressing. You create the samvada between the notes, okay, which creates the raga. Okay, so if if for instance you have um sa now we just sang uh bhairav for you, okay? So sa that sa is absolutely constant okay the sa is the note the bass tonic from which all the other notes come but now this re which we sang it can be either higher or lower based on the rag okay with respect to sa so the same komal re which if you take a, a, a keyboard and you plonk that komal re you will only get one which is why he said keyboards, harmoniums, not applicable for Drupad singing. Okay, because this subtle difference of Udatta, Anudatta, Swarita, that is the three positions of the same note are not possible with when you have one constant key. But now, this is a Komal Ray, which also comes in another rag, like Shri, okay? If you think of this ray, which is coming in Shri and in another rag called Shri, and you think of this ray, ray, 
They're two different entities. It's the same sa, it's the same ray. But it's the use of the swarita, udatta, and anudatta which is giving that difference and giving you the rasa which creates the rag. Okay, so very briefly I've tried to explain. And the seven notes, like, you know, when they turn into the seven notes and why the seven notes? So Yeah, yeah. So that is a more kind of, I think, superficial explanation where you, but well, that's called, that's not really to do with udatta and udatta. It's the murchana system. So, you know, you move the tonic, you move the tonic sa and make it re and then you get another set of notes. Okay, so... So that way you generate the seven notes by moving the tonic. And seven, actually there are 12 because you have re in two positions, komal and shuddha, that is the lower and this thing. So the 12 notes in, in, in a octave makes the music of the world. All the world over, all the music in any part of our world is coming from those 12 notes. So... And that is just by moving the tonic, which we call murchana in, in uh, classical music. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Adhutam, I think our audience is also listening with rapt attention. Uh, so well, just a last question to you and then we'll uh, move on to the announcement for this evening's uh, session. This yes. is by Sannihita Ji, who's saying that, would you please shed light on the use and source of the bijaksharas? or syllables used in Dhrupad with the principles of mantra and the yoga sutras. Thank you very much for a very enjoyable session. Thank you. Uh, do you want to take that question? Uh, no, no, go ahead. Okay. So Bijakshara, the, the, you see the uh, thought is, or, or the legend, let me call it, is that you had Om Hari Om Ananta Narayana as the mantra. Okay, Hari Om Ananta Narayana was the mantra, which later those syllables, because they are, you know, musical syllables, there are some syllables that are not easy to render in music and some syllables which are uh, more musical in sound. So, Hari Om Ananta Narayana and you will hear musicians like Pandit Jasraj and all, they would start with this Om Hari Om Ananta Narayana, okay? Hari Om Shri Ananta Narayana. So, so those syllables, Ra, na, 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 those are the aksharas that were taken from those syllables um, of Hari Om Ananta Narayana, from that chant. And Ri, re, ra, na, ri, nu, ra, na. These are all the syllables. Te, ta, ra, na. These are the syllables that are used for exposition, which, which they say have come directly from that mantra and therefore have the power of that also. Somebody has much. mentioned that, um, Aparna has mentioned that, um, Aparna Sridhar, that um, there is a someone who's written about um, <clears throat> Samagana not being a text of music. Uh, we are not, we are not saying Samagana is a text of music. But I think even the Sama Vedic chanting, okay, which, which gave rise to more notes than... Rigvedic chanting just had Sahasra Shirsha Purusha Sahasra Aksha Sare Sa Ni Sare Sa Only three notes. But Samagana Ha 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 Setum Stara You know Samagana It's called Gana because it was a musical Veda. Okay, and so the way the notes, you see the kind of progression and the link between notes started happening in Samagana or Samavedic chanting, that is what has come into Drupad. We are not saying that Samagana is a text of 
musical knowledge. I think Tara ji has dropped off the call. Maybe some connection issue. Yeah, maybe some power issues. Yes, yes. Uh, Sajjan ji, would you like to uh, complete that, or I think would you like to add anything to that uh, sharing that Tara ji was doing? Yeah, I mean she very beautifully spoke about the mantras. Uh, the Bija mantra is just one thing uh, that maybe I can add to that is that. Uh, this principle of going into the elements mm -hmm. of the mantra and Drupad in general I feel has this approach of going deeper into fundamental elements. So there is a mantra, Narayana. The impact of that comes because each syllable, Na, Ra, Na, each of that has a particular impact on the consciousness. So let's use that. Uh, and using that, combining it in, in different ways to create the music has a very deep impact on the consciousness and in general I think Drupad has this approach even in even while singing a raga someone one of my seniors in the Gurukul once said ki other music you have rag vistar you elaborate the raga in Drupad you have swara vistar you go deep into the notes and elaborate the notes itself so this this general phenomenon of going deeper into fundamental elements is I feel a very core property in Drupad and maybe that's why its appeal is so universal uh, because it's there is it's just so fundamental, so elemental in nature. Yeah, it makes it easy to relate to. It's a bit like the first principles, but in sound. Yeah. First principle yeah. thinking, but a first experience, first principle experience with sound. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Taradi, <laughs> we just lost you. Sorry. Is there something? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, my my computer ran out of charge, saying, you know, you were not supposed to go on so long. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where so artificial think, intelligence and all of that have their limitations. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> <technology> absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, yes, so uh, should we conclude for today? Yes, yes. Adha? But I just, yeah. just, uh, just to end here, I um, mean, just before we come in for the announcements, but I would just like to add that this, uh, the question about the consonants and the fact that, you know, got a, run, a lot of the runners uh, seem to correspond to the physiological aspect of touch of the letters because they're all touching the murdha. Yes. And the yes. Yes. has to do with the Manipura chakra. So what uh, yes. Sajanji said about, you know, the fire and the, the voice and the fire that have to come together, the prana, yes. sorry, the prana and yes. the fire. So that R is the one that stimulates the Ram, no? the Bija of the Manipura Chakra, which really has that fire of energy, of digestion, of all of those uh, Agnis that are in house there. On top, when we do the Murdha sound, it's where the, there is an intersection of two very important energy meridians according to Chinese medicine. So we stimulate those energy meridians as well. So it's, it's very interesting. And the dental has another very softening aspect. Uh, of yes. our so fantastic um, uh, dimensions, I would say, that are uh, captured by this form of music. So I think it's... We would, uh, we would yes. love to listen to more about that from you, actually, at some point. <laughs> That's another that thing. That would enhance our understanding tremendously. <laughs> Satyam. No, I think there's a lot uh, of synergy between the language, uh, the sounds, the prana, yes. yoga. It's a yes. fantastic area to explore. Um, yes. So I would uh, like to invite uh, Vinay Chandraji to please make the announcements for this evening's program because we could go on. <laughs> this is just so I know. <laughs> so engrossing. I know. <laughs> yes. Vinayji? Yeah. Thank you, Taradi and Sajanji, for this wonderful treat that we received this morning. And it will help us to cherish this for quite a long time till we have the next session with you people. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you so much. Whenever we have witnessed this work at Upanishad, we are always convinced about the parallels between Dhrupad and Nachiketa's search for truth. I think today, listening to this, this probably might give us a new production in terms of the exploration between uh, 
Drupad and Yoga Sutra. So we look forward to that, or at least a course. Like Sajanji, uh, we just felt that uh, if you would like to offer a course on Yoga Sutras and music, or especially Drupad, I think we'll be more than happy to host it on our platform because we are focusing yes. on courses where people can get a, an immersive experience into all these rich offerings that are there in the tradition, in the cultural world, and yoga being the link between all these things. So we would definitely invite you to consider this possibility and we'll be more okay. than happy to go ahead and do that. Thank you. So with this, uh, I'd like to make a quick announcement of the next few events. Uh, Kotiji, can you please display us the posters? So this evening, we'll have a practice session with Ms. Gabby Gillison, who will be joining us from Talamore in Ireland, who will be taking us through a practice of exploring levels of being through asana practice. Now we just witnessed exploring various levels of sounds to delve deep inside. And in the evening session, we'll have a practice where using asana as a tool to go inside. And tomorrow morning, again, yet another fascinating session with Akanksha Damini Joshi Ji, who will be taking us through the storytelling of uh, Vijnana Bhairava Tantra. In fact, Sajan Ji was referring to Abhinava Gupta while speaking. And uh, to that tradition of Trika Kaula tradition, we have this great text called Vijnana Bhairava Tantra, one of the most fascinating texts. And keeping that text as a basis, Akanksha ji will be leading us through a storytelling and it will be an opening of uh, wonders. So I would invite you all to join us. Maybe I can request Koti Prasad ji to place a short uh, video of that uh, coming session, a trailer, a teaser. Get ready to receive a sacred story, a story which goes back to the Kailash. Devi Shuru, listen. Utpatti Dvitiya Sthani. That would be tomorrow morning session. And in the evening, we have the valedictory session of the entire month long event. So the month long event that started from 21st June will be concluded tomorrow evening. Uh, and to provide the valedictory address we have with us, Sri, Sri, Sri Vatsa Ramaswamy Ji, one of the senior most teachers of the uh, Krishnamacharya yoga tradition who had the opportunity to spend nearly three decades with the masters like Krishnamacharya ji and uh, Deshikar Charji. So he'll be delivering an address on what is yoga, like looking at the vast dimensions of yoga through this month long exploration. I think it would be a befitting conclusion that we'll have tomorrow for this, maybe not a conclusion, but a pause, a uh, momentary pause for this festival. And uh, I invite you all once again to join us and partake in this yajna that is taking place. And also would like to remind that all these sessions are recorded and are made available on Indica Yoga website, Indica Yoga Facebook page and Indica Yoga YouTube channel. So whenever you wish or if you have missed any session, please make use of these all these available channels to reconnect to this wonderful wisdom that has flown out through masters from different traditions, bringing out different dimensions of yoga. So thank you very much and over to Anna. Coming back to uh, Taradi and uh, Sajanji. I'm sure your sharings have left our audience wanting for more. So if you'd please let them 
have some contact details, uh, websites to follow your courses, to follow your work, please uh, request you to say it aloud and also put it on the panel and attendees in the chat box so that uh, they can reach out to you with a lot more questions that were not possible to take on the session, uh, perhaps. So as you do it, Taradi, would you like to start by just giving them a little bit, uh, some details of yours? Uh, yes, so you, I, if you want to contact me, uh, I think the easiest way would be on my email ID, which is tara.kini at gmail.com, T-A-R-A dot K-I-N-I -I at gmail.com. That would be the easiest way, I think, the most direct way. Yes, and Sajan has also put it up there. Sajanji, would you just like to say it aloud also, just for the benefit of our... Uh, sure, sure. My email is contact at swarayog.com. Swarayog is spelled as S-V-A-R-A-Y-O-G. Swarayog.com. Contact at swarayog.com. So, Bahu Dhanya Vadaha. Um, coming to close, is there, what is your message that you'd like to leave our audience with? So you can decide who will go first. <laughs> <laughs> go on, Sajid. You go and, first. And again, tempted to just say, just leave us on another note, perhaps after what you've said. <laughs> I, I just want to say two things. One, to yoga practitioners, uh, I would encourage you to, since you're already using sound and music to enhance the practice, I would encourage you to also look at music as abhyasa itself. That is one thing. To musicians, I would encourage you to engage with the principles of yoga, which I feel at the root, it's the same yoga or music, it's the same. So I would encourage you to do that, continue building all the incredibly magnificent structures that that all musicians are, but also engage with this realm of consciousness and personal inner exploration. Yes, and, and uh, my, uh, I think that's beautiful, Sajan. You've said it for both musicians and yoga practitioners. Uh, and I will, I will give a message at a more general level, which is that, um, you know, if, if um, yes, practice yoga, practice music, practice whatever you delight in, uh, whatever you want to understand at greater, greater depths, do use that. Uh, but I think the final goal is to discover your own natural self. So keep on that journey in whichever path appeals to you most, but keep that journey because that is the most important reason we are here. Thank you. So would you like to leave us uh, with a, on a musical healing note? <laughs> okay, so Sajan, uh, would you like to sing something in uh, Bhairav itself? Some Bandish maybe? Yeah, but I, I don't know if we can uh, synchronize with no, the time lag. Okay. Yeah, you, you go on. I'll see if I can do anything. Otherwise, yeah. Okay. What are you going to sing? Sagana Bhana? Or something shorter? Shorter. Shiva. Yes, yes, yes. This is a very ancient traditional Drupad composition uh, that has been handed down over generations in the Dagar uh, family. She Kanaka 
क्लेशम आमी Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.